Hello and welcome to AzureMonk.com. In this video, we will demystify and simplify some of the components surrounding Azure Active Directory and the way it integrates with Azure Kubernetes services. We'll talk about Azure AD integrated versus non-Azure AD integrated clusters. We'll also talk about Kubernetes role-based access control and Azure AD role-based access control for AKS clusters and also Azure AD role-based access control for Kubernetes authorization. I know that's a mouthful and it sounds all complicated, but don't worry, we'll break each of them down in plain English. But before we dig into Azure AD and AKS, let's first understand the role kubeconfig file plays in a Kubernetes cluster. So what is a kubeconfig file? You can think of kubeconfig file as the file which contains the information necessary to identify and configure access to a cluster. Let's break that down. For example, let's say you want to run a kubectl command to get pods. This could go to any cluster in the world. kubeconfig has the cluster information which contains the URL of the API server. Now, a single kubeconfig file can be used to access multiple clusters if necessary. The kubeconfig file also contains the user information the authenticated user information. This could contain either the client certificate key, the access token using an OIDC provider, etc. We then have the context, which is essentially a combination of the cluster information and the user information. For example, we could have a admin user one underscore cluster one context, which essentially combines the administrator user credentials for the cluster one. Similarly, we can also have the same admin user for cluster two, or we could have a different combination of admin user two for cluster one as a context. Great, now that we have that concept cleared, let's understand two more concepts, Azure role-based access control and Kubernetes role-based access control. Azure role-based access control allows you to define role-based access on the Azure resources. For example, you can have a user be assigned as an owner or a contributor or a reader at a resource group level or at an Azure resource level. Now, we know that AKS is a managed Kubernetes offering. So underneath the AKS, we still have a Kubernetes cluster running. And Kubernetes itself also has its own role-based access control, which can be configured using role bindings or cluster role bindings within a cluster by logging into the cluster. In the context of AKS cluster, however, the Azure role-based access control has two more roles, which are Azure Kubernetes admin role and Azure Kubernetes user role. Now, we'll get to what each of them does in just a bit. Great, now let's look at how a kubeconfig file looks for a non-Azure AD integrated cluster. Before that, in order to fetch the kubeconfig file, we need to run the following commands to fetch it. az aks get credential and provide the cluster information. And remember, you would have to have access on the cluster before you can run this command. When we run this, we would get the kubeconfig file as something like this. Now, even though we keep calling it the kubeconfig file, the actual name is actually config and it resides under uh, the .cube directory. First, we have the cluster that it's trying to get to along with the certificate authority information. We then have the user information which contains the access token. In this case, it contains the client certificate data for this user. We also have the context, which is a combination of the user information and the cluster information. Now, if I run kubectl get pods, it automatically checks for my context, which is present inside of this file, the kubeconfig file, and it performs the operation. And remember that with this config, I can perform any cluster admin related tasks on the cluster. But let's say somebody gets access to this file. Essentially, it's like somebody stole the master key of the cluster. He would get full access to the cluster. That's not a great situation to be in, right? Now. Let's now talk about an Azure AD integrated cluster. 
With an Azure AD integrated AKS cluster, what now happens is you can grant access to the Kubernetes resources using the Kubernetes role-based access control. But firstly, remember we need to fetch the kube config file in order to authenticate to our cluster. So to fetch the kube config file, you need certain permissions on the AKS cluster. There are two role-based access controls, Azure Kubernetes user role and Azure Kubernetes administrator role. Let's talk about what each of them does. With the Kubernetes user role, the user is able to fetch the kube config file. But the file itself currently does not have any information about the user yet. When the user tries to perform a certain operation, for example, kubectl get pods, he would then be prompted for credentials using the OAuth2 flow for device authentication. This access key is now stored in the kube config file which has an expiry time and a validity. So even if the file was stolen, it would only be valid for a certain amount of time. Okay, so we granted it access on the Azure role-based access control side as Kubernetes user role. Now, what permission does the user have on the actual Kubernetes cluster? Well, nothing, because we haven't granted any permissions yet. All we have done is we have authenticated this user against the cluster. If we need to grant access to this user on the Kubernetes cluster, we could do that using two ways. We can either make this user the cluster administrator of the Kubernetes cluster, or we could grant him granular permissions on the Kubernetes side using role bindings or cluster role bindings. So firstly, how do we grant him cluster admin access? Well, we go to the portal and then click on the cluster configurations tab and go to admin Azure AD groups and add the group the user is part of. Similarly, if the user needed granular permissions on the Kubernetes side, they could create a custom role binding or a custom uh, cluster role binding and grant access to this particular user on the Kubernetes side. But what if the user lost access to the Azure AD groups and he's the last user left and he needs a break class account to make himself the cluster administrator on the Kubernetes side? Well. That's where we would want to use the Azure Kubernetes admin role. Let's see how that works. Firstly, we would grant the user Kubernetes admin role. And then, as usual, we would run the AZ AKS get credential operation to fetch the kubeconfig file, right? But it fails with an error. Hmm. Since this is more of a break class account, in order to fetch the admin kubeconfig, we'll run the same command with the hyphen admin switch. Now, if you look at the kubeconfig file, it looks similar to a non-Azure AD integrated cluster for the user part. That's because it contains the client key data in the kubeconfig. The recommended approach is to only use this as a last resort if you need to grant admin access to a cluster for a user who has lost access to the Azure AD groups. The better way to accomplish this would be using Kubernetes user role and grant access on the admin Azure AD groups or the Kubernetes role-based access control itself by creating uh, role bindings or cluster role bindings. To recap, for a non-Azure AD integrated cluster, every kube config file contains the client key data and the permissions are the clusters admin by default. For an Azure AD integrated cluster, if you grant the Kubernetes user role on Azure side, you can either make the group cluster admin on the Kubernetes side by going to the Azure portal, or you can grant fine-grained permissions on the cluster side by logging into the cluster and creating role bindings or cluster role bindings. And you would want to use the Azure AD the admin role as a break class account to fetch the admin certificate. But wait, is there a better way to grant the Kubernetes role-based access control directly from the Azure side without having to log into the Kubernetes cluster and creating the role bindings or cluster role bindings. I'm glad you asked. There is a way and we'll cover that in the next video. Like this wasn't enough information to confuse somebody. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the